नमस्ते हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू दी एन पी टेल कोर्स रोल ऑफ क्राफ्ट एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इन इंटीरियर आर्किटेक्चर वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग मॉड्यूल नंबर थर्टी सिक्स टूडे एंड वी विल टॉक अबाउट इंटरवेंशंस एंड वील फोकस ऑन दी प्रोसेस बेस्ड इंटरवेंशंस सो वेन वी से इंटरवेंशंस वी वुड बी रेफरिंग टू स्पेसिफिकली दी क्राफ्ट एंड we will try to understand what all are the possible kinds of interventions that could be looked at when we talk about the uh, craft sector and somewhere we'll also see the examples where we will try to understand um different scenarios and uh, specifically you know craft design collaborations and how craft could be seen uh, not generating just some utilitarian products but also how we see the application in different domains and uh, especially interior architecture since we are talking about it with the help of certain relevant interventions which are achieved through you know appropriate collaborations and a proper process which is employed so we'll be discussing that you know throughout these next 4 uh, 5 modules and uh, we'll see Uh, what are the different approaches for interventions and how different individuals and organizations have been working to achieve these interventions so today we will talk about the process based interventions and we will see some uh, examples so like i said uh, let us just try to first begin by understanding what are the different kinds of interventions which are possible and which have a potential when we talk about the craft sector so uh, there could be a huge list and there could be different ways of intervening but just broadly classifying i have tried to put four kinds of uh, interventions that we would be looking at so process based product or design based technology interventions and the marketing and management interventions now of course we did some uh, research already in the previous modules where we were trying to understand the um, gaps in the craft sector the problems faced by the craft persons and uh, you know different policy uh, related issues and that's where we identified that these are the kinds of interventions which are actually required in this sector so based on all that background research and the discussions that we did and the statistics which highlight you know that the certain interventions are required these four have been highlighted here and we'll try to understand them uh, through each module so uh, when we are talking about the process based interventions it is very important to understand that for the contemporary craft sector what are the different approaches and what are the different processes that could be employed which would significantly uh, have an impact on the already existing sector and it will result in uh, value addition new market uh, market creation and uh, most importantly um, creating the livelihood for the uh, craft persons and creating a good quality of life for them so one process is open craftsman process which encourages sharing of experiences in a everyday setting so this vision enables the strengthening of local communities so again the focus is communities here and the prime objective is to strengthen the already existing communities and the work that they have been doing so the artisans local agents suppliers and distributors all of these stakeholders who are a part of an already existing community so strengthening this community gives greater importance to space which is both virtual and physical facilitates the sharing of ideas and knowledge so the most important thing is sharing of ideas and knowledge and that's also the focus which we saw in the road map developed by the uh, national innovation council of india where there is a lot of focus on creating the exchange of uh, ideas and sharing knowledge through discourse and giving appropriate platforms for such kind of uh, exchanges so that's very important now it could be online and in person the sharing of ideas and knowledge creates opportunities to work with other professionals so networking and convergence of different people in a collaborative setting so collaboration is another important word that we have been trying to discuss 
and serves to eliminate technological barriers. So, the most important part is that the technological barriers they get taken care of. Also, the most important thing here is uh, I do not remember which module exactly, but we discussed it once that the craft person and the communities they should be able to take care of the technical know how on their own. Even if we give them some technological advancements, it should not be like that that they have to depend on a certain uh, technicians to come over there in case of problems or in case of certain um, you know uh, faux pas that goes with the machinery. It has to be their empowerment, the technical know how uh, owned by them so that they can take care of their problems. So, uh, eliminating the technological barriers with technology providing support. So, that support is important. Optimal learning occurs when people have the opportunity to explore the world for themselves, but in a guided fashion. So, that is what this approach or the process emphasize on. When people actively create things in the physical world, they are able to construct knowledge in their minds much more easily. So, this approach talks about creating collaboration and sharing of ideas and knowledge. And um, again, we saw certain examples already where this craft design collaboration and exchange of ideas and people coming together is uh, given a lot of importance. In the next module also, we will see a lot of examples where you know this collaboration has been tapped and this craft design process has been employed and it has produced great results. So, we will see some examples like Kala Raksha Vidyale and some more design studios working with this approach and um, generating sustainable livelihoods and dignity and respect for the craft persons and creating the prototypes and the products which the market needs. So, the ecosystem is developed and an equilibrium is uh, maintained you know between what is um, the uh, origin of the uh, product to the entire you know delivery and the end user who gets benefit out, uh, benefited out of it. So, that is one approach and continuing with it this idea which any artisan would agree with was articulated by the US academic Roger Shank one of the main current proponents of learning by doing method. So, this learning by doing that too in a shared environment is something which is really encouraged. The psychologist and philosopher John Dewey creator of the learning by doing pragmatic pedagogical approach maintained that the function of scenarios for design and craft education was to guide and organize the dialectical relationship between the individual and their environment. So, what is important here is that there is a mention of certain scenarios for design and craft and there is a very interesting paper where these scenarios have been mentioned and explored. So, they have explored some 22 scenarios I am not going into those details and the reference is here you could see that. So, identifying the scenarios for craft and design to come together to collaborate uh, starting from mapping the already existing system to coming up with a set of variables and creating an entirely new system which produces interesting and experimental results is something that you know they uh, have explored in that paper. And it helps in guiding this dialectical relationship between the individual and the environment and uh, how this craft design process and the coming together of people and then exploring different scenarios with respect to the environment where one is situated, how it produces some amazing results, those are the findings of that paper. So, just going by you know uh, one uh, diagram and the process which that paper explains. So, I am continuing it from the previous slide. This process requires on one hand which we see here a prior overall analysis of the industry and they are talking about the industry in Spain with which a representative sample can be taken of the different sectors which make up that industry in Spain. So, here on one hand there is this overall analysis of the industry different sectors and different set of information sample sizes and the kinds of uh, areas which are covered. 
on the other hand it takes into account variables. So, here we see different variables over here and it talks about the product, technology, company, distribution, marketing, consumer all the important aspects when we think about the value chain and the craft sector plus the set of certain variables which have a direct or indirect influence on the system. So, here there are a lot of concluding remarks also that they have given. So, going local could be like one approach sustainable intelligence, digital handicraft, the tailor method, the open craftsman that we just uh, uh, discussed few slides ago and then the presumer where there is consumer and then there is the purchasing capacity. So, there are different variables that they have discussed and then they have worked on the permutations and combinations. So, precisely like I told 22 scenarios uh, which is beyond the capacity you know to be discussed in this module, but uh, one could have a look at it. So, that is how they are trying to you know analyze this existing craft system and then coming up with certain variables and uh, creating this another uh, you know way of analyzing how these variables influence the system and what are the different parameters that could be taken into account. So, it is a very interesting paper and it describes the entire process. It also uh, talks about these different approaches and strategies and what are their benefits or uh, you know not beneficial uh, points out of these approaches. So, if you see the entire paper it would explain the process involved and specifically the craft design process. So, continuing our discussions on the craft design process because that is the um, main focus when we are talking about the process based interventions. So, if we talk specifically in the context of India. In India the craft and design sectors share a symbiotic relationship through craft the designer connects with the natural world and the collective past. So, it is through craft that the designers today find their way to connect to the natural world to understand the natural surroundings, the material culture and the wisdom of several generations. Traditional craft skills are adapted to contemporary design. Designers bridge the gap between the market and the artisan. So, according to this craft design process, it is encouraged that the craft person and the designers they work together. Now, of course, there are certain problems with it, and uh, we will see that in the next module and how certain organizations by modifying the model, you know, they have tried to rectify these problems, and the collaboration is established in such a way that. Um, there is creative freedom at both ends and neither the craft person or the designer uh, they are you know uh, sort of uh, exploited or they are not given their due uh, role or new not given their due credit. So, there is certain way of doing things there are certain models uh, where you keep the main creator as the primary uh, person and then the other people just you know aid in the with the inputs and whatever help they could do. So, here designers bridge the gap between the market and the artisan. As today the artisan is geographically apart because not all the artisans have the outreach, not all of them know the contemporary market and the demands and probably it is not even uh, relevant for a lot of artisans because they think that whatever they have been doing traditionally for making utilitarian products is. Uh, something which is important and they do not want to dilute it. So, there are different approaches to this process also. It requires lot of repo building, working together, making the craft person feel very comfortable and um, just letting be uh, letting them be there in their setting close to the natural surroundings. So, the least the designer could do is just give them inputs in a way which does not take away the creative freedom of the craft person. So, because the artisan is geographically apart from his or her client to be able to understand his or her aesthetic and socio cultural needs and also what market requires. Designers help in finding the relevance of craft with respect to the artisan, the consumer and to the global market. So, here again the market is an important factor. 
Designers are thus an interface between the past and the present, the traditional and the modern, trying to match craft production to the needs of modern times and demands. So, this is one process where the designer acts as an interface and there is this collaborative craft design uh, process that is employed. So, again not going into uh, you know too many of details, I like I said there are uh, flip sides to this process also and through some examples we are going to address that. So, if we see this diagram, the diagram of design intervene craft making process. Here we see a typical design process, here we see a village craft entrepreneur making process and this is what we see as the design intervene craft entrepreneur making process. So, where design intervenes the craft. So, if we see this typical design process which starts from you know analysis and initiation and then there is this concept building and then finalization and evaluation. And here when the village craft entrepreneur creates something and then takes the creation to the market, again it is a process of craft creation all the way to market analysis in two simple steps. But when we see here there are a gamut of activities involved, there is a step by step process. So, there are some design students and professionals as one set of stakeholders and then we see certain craftspersons, I would like to replace the word craftsmen with craftspersons, so there are both men and women involved. So, here some young students you know who are exploratory and who have very innovative thinking, they explore the product potential in the market forming user centered design standpoint and for example, if basketry is taken as a craft form, learning from basic basketry crafts and exploring material potentials like we saw some examples where the uh, different materials uh, have been explored for a craft form which otherwise use another palette of materials and colors. So, that is another form of exploration and then there are craft persons who demonstrate and from whom the students and the professionals the other stakeholders learn. And then there is this process of co-creation where they all come together. So, there is experimenting on basketry because we are talking about basketry here, experimenting on basketry crafts and forming design directions. So, heading in a certain direction creating certain design brief and then developing the mock ups to understand uh, you know what would be the possible outcome, it is always good to have certain models and mock ups. And then creating the first prototype. After that finalizing the designs based on the craft person's input. So, it is very important that these design professionals or students who come up with these innovative ideas or uh, you know they just adopt this interesting process where there is value addition to the existing product or there is a completely new product that is envisaged. It is very important that craft person is at the center and there is a regular flow of inputs from him or her. And the craft person should be a part of this process and should not be made to feel that he or she is, is not a part of it or who could not contribute in ideation and design thinking. So, those inputs are very important. Then gaining the feedbacks, consolidating the final design and generating ideas for further design alternatives. So, this is one interesting process where design intervenes craft, there are different people who come together there is ideation, there is co-creation, there is also evaluation whether it works or it fails and things like that. So, continuing further uh, our discussion on craft design process, it is a process that involves designing new products, redesigning existing products with changes in shape, size, color, surface manipulation, material alteration function and utility, exploring new markets and reviving lapsed markets. So, creating new market is one dimension and reviving lapsed market is a very challenging but another option. Because uh, sometimes rather than creating a completely new market, if one understand what is going wrong in an existing market and uh, you know there is value addition and steps taken towards incremental innovation, uh, it is going to be very uh, 
useful to understand how to revive those uh, lapsed markets. Applying traditional skills to meet new opportunities and challenges and the introduction of new materials. So, that is what we were talking about in the previous slide also. So, there is a plethora of new materials and there is a huge potential lot of these materials offer and they need to be tapped and lot of them need to be explored and new prototypes could be uh, generated and worked out based on the original uh, methods and you know the craft skills. New processes because we are talking about the process interventions and craft design process is also a sort of a new process which could be further refined and modified and there could be different uh, models one could work you know there could be different frameworks of interventions. So, new processes uh, developing them is another way of contributing you know towards the craft sector. New tools and technologies of course, because there are lot of craft persons in communities who work with uh, you know very old hand tools which uh, at some point require upgradation. So, that the production could be improved and their uh, you know standards of living could be improved, there could be more uh, sustainable ways of uh, generating income for them if the tools and machinery and technology is upgraded. It is seen as an interface between tradition and modernity. So, we were talking about continuity and revival in the previous module and again you know if we see this craft design process as an interface between the tradition and the modernity. So, we are talking about the continuity, revival, contemporary expressions, we are talking about the uh, symphony of tradition and modernity that matches craft production to the needs of modern living. So, that is what craft design process emphasizes upon. Further talking about collaborations when we talk about the craft design process. Collaborative innovation between designer and craftsperson is a means of expanding the craft vocabulary and tapping contemporary markets. So, it has to be a collaborative innovation, it has to have the inputs from both these stakeholders and it is more like a sharing of ideas and exchange of knowledge rather than one dictating the other what to do and what not to. It is also argued that a link between the apparently conflicting tenets of sustainability can be achieved through responsible and strategic design innovation, which integrates the social, economic, ecological and cultural aspects. And we have always been talking about this that when we talk about the innovation in the craft sector, it has to take care of the social, economic, ecological and most importantly the cultural aspects, especially when we talk about India. It has been seen as a cultural resource and craft is very significant also from the point of you know creating an identity for our nation. So, cultural aspects are very important and they need to be taken into consideration before making any policy, before thinking about any intervention, uh, before talking about any um, you know process or product or technology anything. So, it is very important. Again seeing the craft design process as a process of collaboration. Design intervening craft making process was comprehended based on the three main skills of design, craftsmanship and workmanship, which are shuffled around among participants without conforming to the conventional practices. So, this is the process of collaboration which has been mentioned in one of the researches by bringing the two groups of people with different backgrounds, their alienation to each other could turn out to be an eye opening experience. So, when two people from different backgrounds work together, they have a completely different set of ideas, their approaches uh, may be completely different, their ways of doing would be uh, different, also envisaging the possible output would be different. So, bringing these people together on board and then exchanging and sharing could be a creative process which generates some interesting ideas and become powerful creative resources through the synergy of ideas, mix and match working style with the open ended expectation. So, there is no uh, 
targeted output you know a certain pre uh, conceived idea of what is to be produced rather than goal oriented solidified solution so the expectation is open ended experimental exploratory and creative and it's not something that is very goal oriented and pre conceived already so this we saw already in few previous modules but because it is very relevant when we are talking about the craft design process therefore i am putting it again so that's how we talked about the collaboration between the artisans designers this craft design process and this shared knowledge that is generated when both of them come together so you know in the beginning there is this fuzzy idea of some you know creation of some output and then on the way there are set of ideas that come into picture there is a concept development prototype and final product and through this shared knowledge and through this design development from here to here a certain output is uh, achieved and uh, it is the result of this collaborative craft design process and this is again a co-creation process and it's very collaborative in nature and it's quite encouraged uh, between different stakeholders again this we had seen already in one of the studies where this craft design collaboration was discussed and certain layers were added to the process that we saw on the previous slide so while there is this shared knowledge and this design development happening there are different tools which are employed and you know there is sketching there is discussion between the different stakeholders prototyping and then finally presenting and disseminating evaluating it redoing it or improvising it and all these things that happen throughout this process we also discussed about this intervention part where you know there is this local craft industry and there are other industries and there is again a knowledge transfer and there is a certain kind of collaboration that is uh, established and then it greatly affects the uh, results and there is co-creation and there are different kinds of new interesting um, results out of this process seeing some examples now when we talk about the process based intervention and specifically talking about apen so here the process that we are talking about it also results in a product intervention product based intervention so apen we discussed apen during our previous models that uh, modules that it is the um, art from uh, form from uttarakhand and these are uh, you know ceremonial uh, paintings which are done on the floors and walls so apen designs are good source of folk motifs we also saw some motifs earlier to be used on textile products so this is the sort of intervention and the approach which is being suggested by one of the researchers where you know these folk motifs are integrated on textile products recently these designs are being used on many textile items through different surface enrichment techniques so there is also the uh, application of different techniques such as screen printing block printing there is batik embroidery so through these uh, techniques the original folk motifs of apen they are applied on the textile products so one of the ways to transfer these folk motifs onto the fabric is through applique work now many of you might already be knowing applique is a fascinating needle work art this we are going to see in the next slide in any case so it is a fascinating needle work art form referred to the superimposition of one piece of material upon another usually by the means of stitches so that's a technique which is used on a textile and then how one tries to uh, apply the motifs you know the folk motifs of apen on the textile products through this technique of applique work is one uh, craft design process employed by uh, you know few researchers and they have come up with some nice design solutions that we are going to see so like we were discussing in the previous slide if you look over here here so adaptation of original motifs on fabric through applique work this is what we see here so the uh, original motifs from apen 
they are adapted and applied on the fabric through this technique of applique which is a kind of stitching, the kind of needle work. And here on the right hand side we see design arrangement for different bags incorporating apron motifs. So, the textile designers working with these apron artists and trying to come up with certain new prototypes adopting this craft design process. This is one example and this is a, already a research done by few people and the resource I have mentioned over here. So, this is one way of looking at the craft design collaborative process. Then again uh, continuing with the example of apron, the blend of apron design with applique is providing an imaginative and fresh collection to the people who want to adopt their tradition with minute modernization. So, again here we see these possibilities where one art or craft form when it is combined with the other and the uh, skills and the craft persons of these two different craft forms they come together collaborate and come up with certain processes and ideas which generate some interesting prototypes that is one way of looking at interventions. This is another example this is from Thailand and there is this community of craftspersons in Ba Ayo. So, here there is a very interesting aspect of sustainability you know attached with this example. The villagers have applied the idea of sustainability to the way in which they approach their craft business model by replacing the vetiver grass with their local agricultural waste. So, earlier they were using this vetiver grass and now they have replaced it with their local agricultural waste which is in abundance and accessible in the region where they are situated in. Where earlier the locals looked to outsource certain non-local materials, they have now learned to aim for craft designs that are 100 percent made in their own community in their own region. In essence they have achieved great sustainability and profits by learning to maximize their production and marketing capability by utilizing local resources and labors. So, this is another way to look at the intervention and the craft design process. Lastly, this project has taught the students and villagers the importance of self reliance that is very important that rather than outsourcing the material and uh, you know tools and other things self reliance and then looking at the local resources how important it is. As the main ingredient towards achieving sustainable commercial success. So, this is a very interesting uh, intervention craft design process based intervention which I found. So, I put it over here you could have a look at the details. So, now since we are having a look at different craft design processes and you know process based interventions in the craft sector. I could find this another uh, diagram which is uh, been put by a researcher which talks about how craft begins with problem identification and you know in this chart where this process is explained how problem identification is put at the center and then you know it is followed by ideation and then modeling and testing and then there is network between these and finally, the implementation happens. Also, there are constant inputs user research, market research, technology research and then in terms of outputs there are target markets, there are personas and then there is a preliminary scope of the you know process. So, these kinds of uh, diagrams and process charts also help understand the interlinkages between the different stakeholders and components and to understand the step by step process. So, that is how they are important another one if we have a look at this one. So, this creative process which is at the center it is aided by different set of activities. So, like imagination, examination, perceiving and then all these activities are interconnected. So, then there is at the other node the set of activities involves exploration, experimenting, developing the craft, then creation and co-creation since we are talking about co-creation, reflecting, assessing, revising, evaluating, modifying sharing. So, all of these are interconnected and the central creative process is aided by all these set of activities which are uh, connected to each other in some or the other way and then they work together as a system. Then there is this another interesting one which says the design and innovation process and here while this is a linear path you know from problem finding to finally evolving 
there is a constant graph and there are different set of parameters that come into picture and then there are different activities that happen. So, there is sense making, there is prototyping, refining, there is also discovering on the way, ideating, evaluating. So, from here to this final you know evolving, there is this graph that one takes and then there is this back and forth process that always happens. This is one very interesting example when we are talking about the craft design uh, collaborative processes and uh, I should have also put the picture of Anil Bhai who is the craft person, uh, it, it, I, I think I just forgot it. So, this is this modular storage system and it is a collaborative project done by DICRC and Craft Canvas both in Ahmedabad and uh, this is the designer and there is the craft person who I always keep talking about and admire a lot Anil Bhai and this storage system which is a modular system and uh, it is uh, the exploration of this wood turning and lacquer craft about which we have been discussing already again is a very good example of the craft design collaborative process and how new markets are created and how new prototypes are generated. So, um, I would also like to discuss very interesting design briefs which uh, you know are developed at IIT Roorkee itself and they are the part of project Dharohar where again we are talking about the process and product based interventions. So, these are the design briefs and design briefs also help us understand you know what process to adopt. It is very important sometimes like we said identification of problem. So, identifying the problems then generating certain design briefs and then adopting a process which could help us um, achieve what we uh, envision as part of this design brief. So, explorations in apron craft and applications in interior architecture is something that we tried to develop. So, the focus was you know to draw cues from its traditional uses, understanding apron craft as a surface craft and developing contemporary applications for interior architecture. So, this brief focuses on the process, materials, tools, techniques and methods of traditional apron craft of Almora. So, it is important for us to understand what exists. The same will be translated into exploratory ideas based on the marriage of traditional values and contemporary needs. New prototypes or products conceptualized and developed should reflect on the process of continuity and revival and that is what we always talk about of this craft by virtue of value addition and integration within the milieu of interior architecture. So, application on surfaces, furniture, etcetera. Technology intervention within this uh, craft design process could be to uh, create natural pigments, take care of water recycling, you know use of hand or power tools for reducing effort and increasing efficiency, still keeping the designs customized and not mass produced, this is very important. So, either of the two interventions or combinations that could be worked upon, this was one design brief which was developed and the possible applications of prototypes could be the wall paintings, furniture finishes, coasters, partition panels etcetera. So, this is just the development of design brief which is very essential before a process is adopted to finally come out with a prototype. Similar way a design brief was developed for the explorations in wood carving, wood craft and applications in interior architecture. Again drawing the cues from the traditional uh, uses and then creating a symphony with the um, modern requirements. So, this brief focuses on the process, materials, tools, techniques again the very uh, important uh, you know all the important aspects when we talk about the craft, the materials, tools, techniques everything. The same will be translated into exploratory ideas based on the new contemporary needs. So, developing modular system is something that we were you know trying to look at and possible products or prototypes could be modular furniture like what we see in the case uh, of the modular storage system. Modular space making elements like wall, column and then aesthetically rich with contemporary carving. So, this is one design brief which focuses on the wood craft. So, we were discussing about the craft design collaborative process, certain design briefs, certain examples and um, how they are looked at as an important tool you know for uh, 
innovation intervention in the craft sector especially exploring the crafts in the milieu of space making and tapping the potential of building crafts and we will continue these discussions we will see a lot of product based interventions technology based interventions market based interventions so the next module will focus on the product and design based interventions some references this is the specific case that we discussed from thailand so that example is there and many other uh, resources and references you would find here thank you